Welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're diving into a story that, honestly, sent a huge shockwave through the self-hosting and open source worlds. It's all about a tool that so many of us trusted, Min.io, and what happens when that trust just evaporates. We are, of course, talking about Min.io. You know, for years, this was the go-to for S3-compatible object storage. It was basically your own personal Amazon S3, letting you store massive amounts of data on your own servers. It was slick, it was powerful, and it just worked, whether you're running a tiny home lab or a huge production cluster. But then, kind of quietly, all of that changed. And that's the question that countless developers, sysadmins, and self-hosters are suddenly asking themselves. A project that was built on the back of its open source community basically just ghosted the very people who made it a success. And that's a really tough pill to swallow. This quote, which we pulled from community discussions, just says it all, doesn't it? This wasn't some simple technical update or a version bump. For a lot of users who put in their time, their code, their feedback, this move felt personal. It felt like a core promise had just been broken. So what did Min.io actually do? To really get why everyone's so frustrated, we've got to look at the specific change they made and why it hit the community so hard. Right, this is the key. MyNeo announced on their GitHub that the public open source repository was going into maintenance mode. And what does that mean? Well, it means no more new community changes, no more reviews of issues. For all intents and purposes, active development on the open source version we all knew was over. And look, this wasn't just some small hiccup for users. It immediately created serious, tangible risks for anyone who was relying on the open source version for anything even remotely important. This slide really captures the heart of the shift. The project went from being this amazing example of community-driven open source to something totally different. The promise of reliable, transparent security, which you see there on the left, has now been swapped out for a locked down system where you're not even guaranteed to get critical patches for the open source version. And here's the bottom line. For anyone running a workload that's exposed to the internet, these aren't just red flags, they're complete deal breakers. I mean, the security point alone is a non-starter. A maybe we'll patch it approach to critical security flaws, that's just not acceptable. And to make things worse, users are now reporting that the new commercial version has these subtle little incompatibilities, making a clean migration a real pain. But here's the silver lining in all this, and it's a really powerful one. The community didn't just sit around and get angry, it got to work. The response was immediate, it was collaborative, and it's exactly what makes open source so incredibly resilient. In true self-hosting fashion, people immediately started testing things, sharing their notes, and recommending real, viable alternatives to S3. The conversation flipped from, man, what just happened, to, okay, what's next, almost overnight. It's just a fantastic testament to the community's drive to own its own infrastructure. Okay, so that brings us to the really practical part of this. With Minio basically off the table for any new stuff, what are the top contenders? Let's break down the most popular alternatives that people are flocking to right now. All right, first up, we've got a project that's kind of become the surprise darling of this whole migration wave, Garage. It's a distributed object storage solution, it's written in Rust, and it is getting a ton of positive buzz from former Minio users. And you can see why, right? It's praised for being super lightweight on resources, it's easy to get up and running, and it's got really solid performance. It's a great fit if you value simplicity and efficiency. Now, it is still a younger project, so its user base is smaller and some features are still maturing, but wow, its momentum is undeniable. Next on the list is Seaweed FS. Now, this is another fantastic option. It's written in Go, and it's known for its incredible scalability and flexible design. It's been around for a while, and it's definitely considered a battle-tested powerhouse. So the big takeaway here is its raw power with massive data sets. SeaweedFS is fantastic at handling huge files, which makes it perfect for things like storing media, big backups, or machine learning data. And while it might need a little more tuning to get started, its power and its deep commitment to the open source model make it a really compelling choice. Now, for those of you who need something absolutely bulletproof and you're not afraid of getting your hands dirty, there's the heavyweight champion, Ceph, using its S3-compatible Rados Gateway. Let's be super clear here. This is not a plug-and-play solution. Setting up Ceph can be a serious undertaking. But man, if you have the expertise, it offers resilience, scalability, and redundancy that's pretty much unparalleled. 
It's a true enterprise-grade solution without the vendor lock-in. You know, it's so important to realize that this whole MinIO thing, it's not a one-off. We're seeing this pattern pop up all over the industry. A project gets super popular with help from the community, and then usually to compete with the big cloud providers, it pivots to a much more restrictive license. It's a frustrating trend for sure, and it really highlights that tension between pure open source ideals and the realities of running a business. Okay, so after all that, what's the big question? What should you do now? How do you take all this information and turn it into an actual plan? Look, you don't need to panic and rip everything out tomorrow, but you absolutely need a long-term plan. For any new projects, it's really time to look elsewhere. Take a hard look at your current risk, start playing around with the alternatives we just talked about, and pick a path forward that really aligns with the values of transparency and community control. At the end of the day, this whole episode is just a huge reminder of why we self-host in the first place, right? It's not just about running cool software. It's about owning your data, controlling your infrastructure, and having the freedom to choose tools that actually respect you as a user and as a contributor. Look, Minayo's story is still being written, but its open source community, they've already turned the page and started writing the next chapter. And that leaves all of us with this really final, powerful question. It's not about what was lost anymore. It's about the more open, more resilient systems we have the chance to build together right now.